From Fremont, California, this is The Smoky Podcast, a production of The Smoke Signal covering everything from student life to what's happening in the world, all in short 20-minute episodes. I'm Jessica Yu, the web co-editor of The Smoke Signal. I want to welcome you to the fourth episode of Season 3 of The Smoky Podcast, where four staff writers discuss their views on the importance of having a positive mindset, their current mindsets, and their advice to the student body on how to maintain a good mindset. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm Darshan. I'm Julia. And I'm Shaley, and we're first-year staff writers at The Smoke Signal. In this episode of The Smoky Podcast, we'll be discussing all things mindset. We'll talk about why it's important and how we can shift it to prioritize having a positive mindset. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. What does having a positive mindset mean to you? I guess for me, like, mindset impacts all the interactions that I have with other people. And when I think of interactions, the first thing that comes to mind is problem solving. I think with problem solving, there's like two types of mindsets that we have to use. So I guess the first type is growth mindset, which is basically like embracing change, even if you're not sure whether or not the change will be good for you. And a fixed mindset is when you refuse change, like whatever is going on right now works for you. But I do think a growth mindset is still more versatile and adaptable. Like, as I said, even if you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, so I definitely think growth mindsets are pretty important. And this is mostly because this lesson has been like practically drilled into my head by like my past teachers. Like, for example, my fifth grade teacher and my eighth grade math teacher, they're both like very enthusiastic about growth mindsets. And then it just kind of had a really big impact on me. Definitely. I feel like for me, the growth mindset has really played into the New Year's resolutions that I've set for myself. Instead of having these like extensive goals that I want to reach at from, for a long period of time, I'm setting more short-term goals, whether that's working out daily or you know not taking a nap after school and finishing my homework before going to sleep. Like These are small steps that, make, that get me closer to achieving my goals rather than these big expectations for myself. Yeah, so I think you guys brought up like a lot of really good points about like the importance of growth mindsets. And I feel like one of the most important things of having growth mindset is that it really changes the way we like tackle problems that we face on a day-to-day basis. So I'm just curious, like if you guys are faced with a conflict, what kind of mindset would you guys use to solve it? Well, like a few years ago, I had like an unresolved conflict with one of my friends. I think in that conflict, we both had fixed mindsets at first. We both like refused to change our ways. And because of that, the conflict didn't solve itself because like there was no change, right? So. I decided to adopt a growth mindset because there was no way I could guarantee that my friend would adopt a growth mindset. And if I, like, I don't know, wanted change, maybe it would happen. So once I adopted a growth mindset, I guess my friend also did the same thing. And we were able to, like, put an end to the conflict. And, yeah, I guess a growth mindset is, like, far superior to a fixed mindset when it comes to problem solving. Yeah, and, like, on the topic of, like, friends, I feel like, for me, it's definitely important to have friends with a similar mindset to me because, you know, whether it comes to problem solving or setting our own goals and pushing ourselves and pushing our friends, I feel like it's good to surround yourself with people who have similar mindsets, similar goals, and similar interests as you. Yeah, so I remember in fourth grade, I was friends with this one person who, like, I would follow, like, whatever she did, and but eventually she moved away. Um, So in fifth grade, I, like, wasn't really that close friends with anyone but eventually I made new friends and I found that it was a lot more freeing in that I could like choose to do what I wanted to and then I had my own choices. Yeah I think something Shaylee mentioned was actually really interesting to me um, when she said how our mindset it's like really intertwined with like the people we surround ourselves with and I really really agree with that like I feel like I can't even stress enough like how much I relate to um, that statement because like when I was younger I used to spend like a lot of time around my parents like of course and um they used to kind of push me to do like a lot of things i just like had zero interest in like math competitions sports camps and things like that and i feel like um this kind of negatively impacted me a bit growing up because i always felt like a lot of need to kind of live up to other people's expectations and make other people happy rather than just like asking myself if i really enjoyed what i was doing so um in my day-to-day life whenever i make a decision i always I'm always sure to ask myself, like, why am I actually doing this? Like, am I doing this for myself or am I just doing this because I want to please someone else? Yeah, I definitely think that that's a really, really good habit that you've set for yourself. I feel like especially now, like, being in senior year, I've definitely taken a chance to, like, step back and look at the goals and everything that I want to achieve and really, like, categorize whether I'm doing it for myself or I'm doing it, you know, to please others. Because at the end of the day, of course, we all want to live lives for live our life for ourselves and do what's best um, for ourselves and our own growth. Yeah, so I think at the end of the day, if you're satisfied with yourself, you've done a good job. And I feel like having the right mindset really helps you like 
take care of yourself better. So a growth mindset basically incorporates like an internal locus of control, which is like the feeling that you have the power to direct how your future will turn out. And because of this, you learn to prioritize yourself. So I feel like another important aspect of mindset or just like one kind of component of your mindset is how you view yourself and like your own self-image and self-confidence. So for me, I think just that just like believing in myself has always been a really big struggle that I faced. I think like in the beginning of high school, I definitely struggled with a lot of imposter syndrome and I still kind of do to this day. Like I remember in freshman year, I set like this huge list of goals for myself of everything that I really wanted to accomplish. And I think a couple months ago, I, I realized that like I had actually achieved a lot of what I initially wanted, but I still was finding ways to like belittle my accomplishments, even though I knew that like a, like the past version of myself would have been really proud. So what about you guys? Have you ever dealt with things like imposter syndrome or maybe like feeling unconfident about yourselves? Definitely. I think I definitely feel that when it comes to trying new things and even applying for the smoke signal. I was like, oh, I'm a senior, like applying for the smoke signal, I probably shouldn't do it. But I'm so glad I did because now I'm surrounded by such an amazing group of people and I've learned so much already in the short period of time. So I think, yeah, like even like taking classes or um, dancing with a group of people who are a lot better than me or you know, being around a different group of people who like, I'm like, oh, do I fit in here? Like, just trying new things and getting out of my comfort zone. I've definitely felt a lot of imposter syndrome, but I feel like, like 99% of the time, it ends up being a really good moment of growth for me. So what about you guys? I guess when it comes to like self-satisfaction and confidence, you should like try to get rid of any mindset that lets that depend on like other people. Cause like, they don't know you any more than you do. You know yourself best. Yeah, I think when I was uh, younger, my sense of accomplishment used to rely a lot on like my goals and like if I reached them or not. Uh, for example, I used to be um, very involved in music, so I would like enter for competitions or like auditions, but a lot of the time I wouldn't get in. And then I remember once specifically in eighth grade when I auditioned for like an honors orchestra, I didn't get in, but a lot of my friends did, and I that kind of led to me feeling like, oh, why was I not good enough to get in? But then eventually I learned to work around that and then center my goals around like things that I was more passionate about. Yeah, I actually really relate to what Julia just said about like kind of like the music environment. I think like not just in music, but in day to day life, it's really hard not to like compare our achievements with other people. Like maybe you'll be looking at like maybe even test scores and be like, oh, like why did this person do so much better than me? Or like, why couldn't I have done as good as them? And I think like a goal I have my, for myself this year is actually like not to compare myself to people anymore and not to like base my own happiness off of like other people's accomplishments and like put myself down or put other people down based on off like what we've achieved. And um, I think a big way I plan to do, to do this is kind of like to use social media a little bit less. I think social media can be like a bit curated sometimes and um, people really only show like what they want others to see. So I think it's important to realize that like we were all only exposed to like a small fraction of other people's realities. So it's really not fair if like we kind of compare ourselves to other people and these people could have like completely different backgrounds and stories than us. I definitely agree with um, when you brought up social media. It's that like perspective that we don't really have. Again, like we're shown like the good portion of people's lives and we never know what's going on behind the scenes. So to compare our life with someone's life who could be drastically different, I feel like it's unfair to ourselves. Um, but yeah, like, on the topic of perspective, like, how have your guys' perspective changed throughout high school? That's actually a really interesting question, I feel like. Um, personally, I think that, like, I don't know if I'm ever going to change as much throughout my life as I have changed in high school. I think that, like, the past three or so years at Mission have really impacted me a lot. As a person, I think that um, I've definitely ventured outside my comfort zone a lot, and I don't even know if it would, like, feel... Um, natural if I had like a conversation with myself just like last year because there's a lot of stuff that can change in just such a short amount of time so what about you guys? Well, I guess for me like my perspective changes whenever I make mistakes because I see mistakes as a learning opportunity like you need to embrace mistakes and I guess sometimes it's okay to like accept disappointment because like when you accept disappointment the good times will probably feel a lot better. Definitely. I really agree with like kind of honing in on emotions. Like you don't have to feel ha happy all the time. And the only way to feel happy is to feel moments of sadness. But to look at those sad or disappointing moments as, you know, reasons to grow, I think is really important. It's something that we should all be doing. Yeah. So bouncing off the topic of like self-growth, um, obviously all of us have kind of changed a lot like throughout this year. And 
throughout um, our lives, basically. So I'm just wondering, like, what kind of tips do you guys have for listeners who may be trying to, like, break free from toxic mindsets of their own? Well, I think I would recommend, like, going off social media for a little bit. Because, like, yeah. I think as we talked about, like, on Instagram or other apps, people are only posting, like, the best aspects of their lives. Sometimes it's usually not true. It's not an accurate representation of their lives. So I guess we should just learn to be more satisfied with ourselves and, like, stop seeing what other people are, like, bragging about themselves. Yeah, for me, I feel like it's kind of congratulating and being proud of myself for small accomplishments, even if they're not some long-term goal that I set, like, for a year's worth of time. Um, I feel like things like journaling or doodling or, you know, writing down short-term goals or daily tasks have really been helpful for me to look back and be like, even if I didn't accomplish this one thing, I did accomplish these five things and I should be proud of myself and, you know, like, keep moving forward rather than dwelling on something that, say, I didn't do. Similarly to what Shaylee said about like creating my journals, I learned to start creating um, lists um, to organize my life around, and that really helped with a sense of accomplishment as well. Yeah, I really like all the tips you guys gave. I think um, for me, something I definitely want to do this new year and that I've been getting a lot better at this past year is just like kind of taking breaks for myself more often. I think especially being a junior, I, I'm almost like constantly locked in this, in this mindset of like, oh, I have to like keep achieving and I like, keep moving forward. And just like keep grinding through everything but I think there you sometimes reach a certain point where that's just like not healthy for your mindset and it's not healthy for like your personal well-being either so I've kind of learned that like when I'm feeling really stressed or overloaded like I don't need to keep on pushing myself if it's like something that's really bothering me so I want to like it's definitely okay to like um kind of like move back from things or drop activities if you feel like it's getting way too much for you to handle and definitely talking about my problems with other people has helped me a lot like even just counselors at school and especially people in my family. So I was just wondering, um, like when you guys feel like really stressed, what are like some resources or outlets that you guys do to make yourselves feel better? So when I feel stressed, I normally like go for simpler methods. Like I go on walks and just like listen to music and I find that like really helps me to calm down and take my mind off of things. I guess when I feel stressed, like whether it's about like an activity or something, I put the activity aside for a few minutes and I go and like work on something else. You know, like de-stressed a bit, I come back and usually since I'm de-stressed, I probably like can do a better job on the activity. Yeah, so I feel like for me when I'm stressed, especially in one aspect of my life, it starts to translate to other aspects and I pretty much feel like my whole life's a mess. So I think just kind of like actually taking a chance to like think about what is my problem, what are steps I can take to fix it. And honestly, if that doesn't work, because sometimes there's not always a solution to, you know, feeling stressed. It's just about, you know, like taking a step back, like you guys said. And like, for me, it's spending time with family and friends definitely helped me help me get my mind, when I'm mind off of things when I'm having a hard time. Yeah, I really relate to that. I think sometimes it can be really difficult to not feel super overwhelmed by everything going on in life. And just remembering it's okay to like take small steps forward. Um, I think in the future, something I would really like to see for myself is like just more personal growth throughout high school. And I hope that like I can have better habits to take care of myself. And um, I was wondering, like, uh, have you guys ever talked about any of like your issues for about like mindset with a counselor or anyone at school? Um, I've definitely reached out to my counselor a couple of times. All of the counselors are so accessible and so easy to talk to, and they're always there to listen if you have any problems or need help with anything. So, um, what about you guys? Well, I haven't really talked to any counselors, but like, whenever I do have like problems with mindset, I'm really grateful for my friends. I usually just go talk it out with my friends. They come up with like all sorts of good ideas, and I can incorporate these ideas, and naturally things just work out. We want to thank Shaylee, Julia, Darshan, and Jenny for joining us on this episode of the Smoky Podcast. Our background music is produced by Lucrembo, and our show is edited by Tanisha Shravasta and Jessica Yu. See you next time on the next episode of the Smoky Podcast.